Alright, so we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with a reaction video on the gaming channel. And today we're going to be doing a video going over multiplayer games and how multiplayer games is falling off no matter really what genre it is when it comes to battle royales, shooters, uh, sports games, pretty much any type of genre that you can think of for multiplayer games. It just seems to have fallen off. And we're going to watch a video on why. If you guys want more, just like the video, subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, let's hop into it. I have been playing multiplayer games religiously since I was a shitty little squeaker boy. You see, one day I moved to a country where I could finally have access to a most hallowed and fabled thing, the internet. Suddenly a whole new world was revealed to my underdeveloped little mind. I think I know why I don't like uh, some of them shits. I think because... Like, having a try hard so it's like no such thing as casual gaming anymore. It's like everything is like try hard. Like, even if you play public for a lot of stuff, it's like everything is such try hard, I guess. I don't know. Counter-Strike, Team Fortress 2, Unreal Tournament, Halo 2. I was instantly hooked. My tiny child brain could not have fathomed the world of and even if it's not try hard, for some reason, it's just boring for most of the other games. I'd already fallen in love with single player titles. Half Life One was the first game I ever played. I never played Half Life. Finish, and Combat Evolved was my first ever console game. So you could say I was already in too deep not to be sinking. He cold. What the hell? However, it changed everything. See, I was always really... If you have cl clips of you playing on 360, bro, you've been playing gaming for... You've been, like, gaming for a long time. Make friends or communicate. If anything, I have literally no shame, and I'm near incapable of feeling social anxiety. It was more a case of I have always been very picky with who my friends are. The internet changed this. Suddenly, I was hopping from lobby to lobby, making friends with everyone. From fellow squeakers like myself, my this nigga cold. every shrill cry and swear, to people three times my age juggling their free time so they could get one more game on Halo before the wife got back home with the kids. This was, quite frankly, a golden age. From full Xbox parties on COD, where everyone was discovering a plethora of new mother-related insults, to entire weekends wasted on Halo custom games with the boys. Infection, Fat Man, Jenga. If your brain could think it, the community would have already made it. To this day, there has never been a more welcoming and fun atmosphere in online gaming, at least in my experience. I still cherish many of the memories I made playing in these lobbies, and some of the people I met I am still friends with to this day. So when did it all go wrong? When did all of what made multiplayer enticing and joyous to me finally curl up and die. Well, I assume you're at least somewhat literate, since you're operating your device of choice and clicking this video. So you already know. Why is this nigga talking like this? About in real explicit detail. The money game. The first point probably isn't news to anyone. In fact, it's an inescapable reality of our current video gaming industry. It's not and really surprising. That's, a, that's, that's one point I expected to see. Money talks, baby. Oh yeah, we're starting with good old-fashioned dirty greed. Have you noticed that as time goes on, you're unlocking less and less and less and less in your online shooty bang-bangs by actually playing the game? Is it starting to irk you that we once had games with fully realized progression systems where you'd unlock through actual playtime and enjoyment, a variety of class options, weapon attachments, cosmetics, and other stuff that just made you feel that dopamine hit non-stop straight to the veins. Well, fear no more, little ones. Papa Greedy Publisher is here, and he's going to make sure to protect you from that scary, scary dopamine. No, no, no. 
you shouldn't be allowed to feel the rush of progression and increasing customization without forking out some money. It's for your own safety, after all. I mean, what else can we do to protect you from this horrible and addictive chemical? No, no, don't look at that. That's not important. That addiction is fine. This one is not. Move along now. What's in the box? What's in the fucking box? If your brain still processes the basic information, you're getting the gist of where I'm going. Greed has stripped down multiplayer experiences to the absolute most basic form. Take Overwatch 2 for an example. They've removed the terrible loot box system, at least at the time of recording. You know, the one that encourages gambling in children. And what do they replace it with? A better uh, pass. Right, just hard cash. You don't earn jack shit anymore in Overwatch <laughs> 2. No. Your rank go up or your rank go down. That is the only real progression you get nowadays. But why would they do this? All these different developers and publishers, why would they take away your ability to organically earn things in their games and unlock cosmetics and other stuff that is shown to factually increase most people's enjoyment of it? Why is bro actually good? Yes, you got me. The answer is literally and will always be money. They're greedy bastards. They know that if you don't have any other way to unlock something, you'll feel what the hell? That little crackhead inside your brain. Oh, oh I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Did you get addicted to crack? Did somebody get addicted to crack? Oh. To toss them 50 bucks here and there for a few meaningless cosmetics. But they're not meaningless, are they? Not to you. Because surprise, surprise, people like to display their individuality and personality through their online personas. So, easy money, suckers. You want access to the things that will allow you to differentiate your character from everyone else's? Cough up the dough, buddy boy. This isn't progression to me. It's not even close, and it simply doesn't give me the same dopamine hit that the good old days on Halo unlocking recon through vidmaster challenges did. The feeling of hitting max rank in Modern Warfare 2, the old one, and having access to every weapon in every loadout because I had earned it by playing the damned video game. I don't have fun in the long run if there is no tangible progression in a game. I simply get bored and I leave. I can only play the same maps over and over and over again with nothing changing so many times before I just don't care anymore. Before every angle and every tactic is old hat but progression used to at least provide some incentive to keep playing. To try different crap and experiment. No more. I know what some hey, like Battlefront used to be fun. Scream, but all Battlefront actually used to be fun. Law. What about season passes? Don't those offer you some sort of progression? Well, wouldn't you know it, little guy? This game actually used, used to be fun, I ain't gonna lie. Right now, the second one was terrible. Season pass systems and foam. Or at first, I haven't played it really since it first first came out. I heard that they'd be fixing up them games when they first come out. That I but hate more I ain't go back. Or will ever hate more than the season pass. I know that was a really hard hitting statement, wasn't it? But of course, you're wondering why I despise season passes with such a burning passion. You'll argue that at the very least they're better than predatory loot boxes and gambling systems. And yeah, you're not wrong. But that doesn't invalidate the new, and to me, much more infuriating issue that they create. Stick with me here. I know most of you are probably too young or too lazy to have ever worked a real job. Trust me, I feel you here. Work sucks, which is exactly why season passes also suck. Let me try to put this into simple words. I already have to work a job to survive and exist. And trust me, I loathe every fucking minute of it. I don't want a second job. Or a third. Or a fourth. That's what season passes are. See, publishers started feeling the gambling heat when it came to the loot boxes. Now, battle passes was cool at first, but they, they going, they wilding with it now. still just as predatory and unfun but at the very least didn't encourage an entire new generation to become gambling fiends. Don't worry, we have Twitch streamers to help with that anyway. Well, here comes Fortnite. Yeah, 
do the funny dancey notes. Woo! Nah, that's crazy. Fortnite arguably popularized the season pass system, where you'd buy a pass for each season and unlock stuff while playing a game that was, of course, free to play. Look, I'll give Epic and Fortnite shit until the day I die, but at the very least, you actually complete their pass relatively quickly. Yeah. It's not the worst deal in the world. I get them. I, at the time, Fortnite it actually does it right. Loot boxes, especially if you knew you'd sink that time into the game anyway. The issue arose when more and more other games started adapting Copy the same him, system. Bro. You see, when every fucking multiplayer game in <laughs> existence implements a season pass, suddenly you're starting to run into an issue. Time is precious. At the very least, mine is. You might not value yours at all, but that's your problem. If you play more than one, or even two multiplayer games actively, then you suddenly experience this dreadful thing that is clearly 100% intended by the devs and publishers. Wow. Good old you really said that. Of missing out. Say you're a completionist and you play, oh, I don't know, Destiny 2, and you like trying to keep up with content, getting everything in terms of items and such and honestly enjoy hopping on with friends and grinding every so often. Now, imagine a season pass system suddenly shows up, and you now have a limited time every season to either play Destiny 2 enough for it to almost feel like work, or miss out on loads of shit. Worse though, it's shit you've paid for, that if you don't complete in the allotted time, is gone forever. Now I get it, the effect this has on many is the intended one, which is they start grinding like crazy and burning insane amounts of time on these games because the fear is too strong. They need it. They need the time-limited cosmetics and items that will disappear into the void forever. They need the crack cocaine. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely I don't. I don't like feeling pressured to play a game when I don't want to. I don't like that stopping for a few months just to do other shit, you know, like real life shit, means you can miss a bunch of crap that will forever remain empty on that in-game tick box of stuff you want to collect. I need to blow my shit one more time, I'm turning this shit off. Season passes have ever had for Not me a lot. is that they make me drop a game, almost permanently. I'll come back for large expansions and maybe play it when my friends are gone. But I will lose literally all drive to go and run on the hamster wheel for measly rewards because, oh no, time is running out. It is the quickest way to sour me on a game that is otherwise an enjoyable experience to somehow turn what should be the enjoyment of playing into the same feeling I get when I have deadlines for work. I don't want or need a second job, and any video game that tries to make itself into more of a job than a game for you, this shit isn't worth my time. Look, it would make sense. That nigga playing Star Wars like that shit Battlefield. Game, ever. But I don't. I enjoy variety. I like to hop between different engaging experiences. Oh, he ain't lying in none of this shit he's saying. But when I'm just trying to figure out why this nigga talking like this. Their game starts implementing these trash passes. I would rather just not touch them at all. Even worse when they do shit like Valorant and Halo Infinite. Which, by the way, I have uninstalled, so I won't even show footage of. Where you have to do specific challenges to even level the pass. Challenges that force you into game modes you don't like, or to play with weapons you aren't good with, or even classes or heroes you dislike just to progress. That is atrocious. 
Not only is the game trying to stress you out with a time limit for unlocking crap you have paid for already, it is also making you play the game in ways that you might not enjoy at all. This mountain of shit is why I hate season passes. I rarely, if ever, spend money on them anymore. No, season passes is ass. Rather dedicate Cause you get it's like a time limit. Experiences that value that time. You want to see a few good examples of how this system can be implemented well? Look no further than the Master Chief Collection and Deep Rock Galactic. In the MCC, your season passes are all free and they never expire. So you can play the game whenever the fancy strikes you, and you'll just unlock stuff as you play. Lovely, simple, no FOMO, no stress, making me feel like my time would be better spent doing literally anything else. Deep Rock Galactic, again because you bought the game full price, offers every season's reward tree for free. But even better, if you miss any one season and don't get all the items, they then move from the season pass into the game's loot pool, so you can still unlock them with RNG and gain currency over time. Would you look at that? Non-predatory seasonal content systems? Color me impressed. Remember how a long time ago, around the start of this video, I was talking about all of these positive social experiences I had on multiplayer games. Even when I was a child, interacting with people who had no reason to be cool, welcoming and embracing of me into their little friendship groups, yet still were? I have not had an experience similar to that in any multiplayer video game for what feels like a decade since. Except for co-op games, which I'm going to make a separate video on. Have you? I don't know what the fuck happened to gaming communities. Co-op games kind of been uh, kind of been falling off too. Toxic sweat. To be honest, on literally every damn video game, all that you ever see in text or voice chat is people screaming. Slurs. Hasn't been a crazy good co-op game in my opinion since like. Or just Borderlands 3, maybe? Toxic balls of feces all day, every day, in all their matches. What happened? I'm asking genuinely on this one. I don't know. I can't begin to guess. Is it just the increased access of people to these games has allowed the dregs of humanity to wash in? Maybe. I've even had theories that maybe the creation of communities on stuff like Discord results in everyone who isn't a horrid little gremlin just finding personal communities dedicated around the games they play, where everyone is just overall nicer to each other. So all you're left with in public matchmaking in terms of people who actually use the in-game comms is honestly just the worst people you could ever imagine. That's facts. I do a little trolling myself. And I'll be equally toxic at someone if they spend an entire round flaming me. I'll be trolling, I ain't gonna lie. Flaming my team in ranked all day, or constantly seem to just be trying to start toxic arguments in every I feel like Apex pretty fun, I ain't gonna lie. Apex pretty aggressive. Apex pretty consistent how good it is in my opinion. Even with the infamous pre-game lobbies of people telling you they're going to fuck your mom, a majority of the people I'd meet would be quite alright. They'd be capable of having conversations. They wouldn't take the damn game so seriously. It's like people's ability to have fun has just fucking evaporated. They all want to be esports players, and they think they're hot shit, so they'll act that way in all the Now that's what I was saying at the play. beginning. I feel like everybody trying to be calm. It comp. just isn't fun anymore. Multiplayer game lobbies... 2K's problem is just being so boring. I don't think that's really the same thing on 2K. You have to wonder why any of these people in these matches are even bothering to play the games at all anymore. Like, Everybody on 2K is ass. I ironically go the fuck outside I should just know be fine and in touch some grass. The dream of the esports wannabe. One trend I noticed as esports was becoming more and more of a big deal was that players lost their minds trying to emulate these people in professional teams. And the more they tried, the more they turned into the stinky sweat lords that infest online games nowadays. 
people who think they're going to be the next shroud. So they're on there clenching their cheeks as hard as possible, literally shitting and shaking the entire match. Because if they didn't win, then how could they possibly be having any fun? These are the people that will shout at you in unranked matches for picking non-meta characters, weapons, classes, etc. People who have warped their idea of fun to such a pathetic degree that even when they're like not platinum ranked in whatever they're playing, they'll still act like they're in grand. How would they care about they rank though if they're in unranked matches? The meta. It's boring. You want to see how boring? Take a look at Overwatch. And how a stale and incredibly boring meta to watch what game is this shit? pretty much kneecapped the competitive esports scene. Well, now you have millions of little troglodytes trying to mimic their favorite nerd from esports and constantly playing only the meta shit and raging any time they lose while playing that meta. Or this is that Team Fortress game. Is committed of someone not caring about the meta at all. Blasphemy, how could you possibly be playing this game just to kick back and relax? What do you mean you're gonna play an off-meta character? Uh, what do you mean you're using that terrible gun for the fun of it? What is wrong with you? Unbearable. Of course, esports gave rise to another terrible thing for multiplayer gaming. And that is developers and publishers who see the money in that industry and suddenly want every goddamn game they ever make to be an esports. What does this mean? Well, suddenly, everything needs to be balanced. And the way terrible... Mm, is that's... Balancing, of course, uh, I, I, I ain't never even thought about that shit. Constantly nerfing... Now, that may be the problem with 2K shit. Or I ain't gonna lie. Into the ground. Because if that might actually be the problem with 2K shit. Trying to make everything balanced. Scene, right? You yeah, see, that should be this literally ruining the game. Every single modern shooter. You have dev teams constantly badly balancing and then rebalancing the game to a degree where it's almost comedic. One week. 2K problem is pretty much probably that in realism, and trying to be too realistic. Week, he's dead here because some professional nerds complain that they're broken. This also leads to balancing based on data, but that needs to be an entire video all on its own. Look at the blog post the Overwatch devs released recently to the time of this recording, where they discussed how they balance off data, such as hero pick and win rates. You want a quick and dirty example of why balancing off win rates is a terrible fucking idea? Because there can be a lot of bias in how someone reacts. Balancing based off of win For rates example, is crazy. You see a hero who has an incredibly high win rate. They didn't even do it based off like they facts. To be busted, they just did it based off so how much that, that character that. wins? When in reality, they're a niche character who sucks. So nobody but the people who have mastered this character will ever pick them. Now that's Thereby, crazy. High win rate, yes. Because the only people who can even play the crappy character are the ones who have learned them inside and out. The balancing rabbit hole is infinite. Bro, what the hell are these games? All the time. So we're not going deeper into it without a tab of... Why is this nigga so cold at sniping? What the fuck? Instead, let's shift our focus to the problem with team games. Now, I'm no top player in the world at pretty much anything, but I'm also not total crap. This creates a massive problem for me. You see, skill-based matchmaking systems do in fact punish good performance, and I experience this in about every single multiplayer game I ever dedicate time to. I'll do good for a few matches, and suddenly I'm facing a team of absolute gods. While my teammates are doing their best to keep oxygen cycling in and out of their lungs. This incredibly aggressive type of matchmaking has only become more and more prevalent of late, with more people pointing it out and noticing it. In the past, I didn't mind it or even notice it as much because games used to actually reward skilled play. I know, what an idea! Whether mechanical skill, map knowledge, if you were good at, say, Halo or COD, or any game really, you could feasibly carry your team on your back and still eke out a win. And it felt good. You definitely could. You felt like a Chad. The issue nowadays is that so many games are designed around forced teamwork to such an extent that if you have a single person not playing their role properly, 
you are doomed Seshi, to fail. To Seshi, hey, that's a lot of games. Your healers are bad. That's a lot of games. GG. He, he's you're spitting right now. You're a healer, but your DPS is incapable of killing any of the four different people using you as a makeshift pinata? Welp, GG. Compare this with any single match of Halo, where you can honestly be getting more than half the kills in a match by yourself and still managing to at least stand a chance as a result of your own effort being rewarded. You can't do that anymore in most games, because design has shifted into these hero and role-based games that encourage esports-style team makeups. Even if you're good, most of the time you'll feel like the game is- Overwatch was definitely made for esports, for though. Goal it was always made for esports, though, I feel like. How dare you? Multiplayer games, you're dead. There you have it, a jumble of thoughts and words made manifest. This is how I fell completely out of love with a genre that I was once honestly obsessed with. I don't know if I'll ever feel the same drive I once did to play these kinds of games again. Maybe I've just outgrown them, or maybe the plethora of issues I've spent this whole video outlining have so completely tainted the idea of multiplayer in my mind that there's nothing left for me to go back to. Whatever the case, I'll always cherish the thousands of combined hours I've spent finishing the fight in Halo, hitting Damn. top shots in Counter Strike, pulling off insane feats of mobility. Was I tripping not playing Titanfall and like many that? Friends and communities that shit look bussin'. Along the, way. the good games will always remain good. Nah, that shit look bussin', bro. Coming along to replace them. Titanfall looks so much like Apex. Wasn't uh, Apex kind of inspired from Titanfall gameplay? Because didn't EA make both? Enjoyment, far less toxicity, and way more bang for your buck. Oh yeah, you know what that means. Rock and stone. So yeah, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Alright, I mean, he was kind of blowing me a couple times there, and I feel like he was faking his voice for the majority of the video. So that was kind of irking me a little bit too. But hey, I'm going to be honest. It was a W video. He was kind of spitting facts majority of the video pretty much all of it. It's a lot of games that I play that I think That a lot of the stuff he was saying could pertain to if there is anything in this video that you feel like You kind of understood what he was coming from with it Put that in the comment down below what you think Is the reason why multiplayer games are falling off, but yeah, that's gonna be in this video If you guys want more like the video subscribe if you're new without further ado man, it's your boy Fitz I'll do it, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!